Shout out to the most high. It's always a high season when we in our lower status. LD is also known Party Boy Lawrence the One for another episode of I Need to Know with my special guest, my young homie in traffic. Introduce yourself, G. Man, Jordan Gomes, aka Stunner Man 02, aka Suave De La Stunner, aka hey. Nigel Standards, aka hey. I need a whole bunch of money, change my life, and go to go crazy. You know what I'm saying? What's I like up? I What's like up, how you man? came with that energy, man. For it sure, feels man. good. It's always shout out to the most high. It's always the highest scene when we in our lower state because God going to be God. You know what I'm Facts. saying? I like that. So, man, this is what I ask all my guests first. How did you get your name, Stunner Man? So, Stunner Man 02. That's essential. The 02 is essential. I was a young boy, probably like 11, 12. As you remember, one of the greatest groups to come out of the Bay Area was thriving at that time on BET, the Pack. Oh, okay. I mean, Vans was doing numbers. Got my Vans on, but they, they look like, like sneakers. Hey, it going crazy. <laughs> so I lived at Hunter's Point at the time. Unbeknownst to me, little Uno grandma lived on the same block, Garlington, Commerce Court, that I lived on. So when I was young, 11, 12, everybody was saying, you look like Stunner Man from the pack. And to me, like growing up, people who I look like in terms of just exterior physical looks, I'm automatically like, oh, I look like them. They must be cool because they look like me, and I want to know more about them. Yeah. Uh, surprisingly enough, that's how All Black became my favorite rapper because Lil Yi was roasting me one day. We always roast each other, and he was like, man, you look like All Black. And I'm thinking All Black was light-skinned this whole time. whole time, he looked like me. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. So going back to the story, um, uh, everybody telling me I look like Stunner Man from the pack growing up. Waves, dark skin. And I'm like, damn, he kind of like the leader of the pack. He having fun. He he rap good. Dang, I kind of like that. It, it, be, yeah. it became a role model. So I'm like, oh, that's what's up. I end up meeting dude when I was like 12 years old and I seen him. And I'm like, man, I'm starstruck. I'm like, oh, you oh, you look like Stunner Man from the pack. And he and he not responding to me. Yeah. So he kind of brushing me off. And I said like five more times. And then me saying it. He, I'm like, um, he like, cause I am, he's like, cause I am Stunner Man from the pack. And I'm like, oh, and that's like the way he approached me, I wasn't really feeling that. So, you know, we got into a small altercation. I was a little kid. And from that, you know what I'm saying? My partners kind of started calling me Stunner Man. Yeah. It was already Jay Stunner cause I was a fan. Yeah. And then it was cause, yeah. yeah. And then eventually it went in to Stunner Man. And I'm happy to say that I met him last year and I told him this story yeah. and he was like, what nigga? And I, and, but it really turned out to something good to the point to where he gave me like, kind of like the approval to live with the Stunner Man 02 like kind of thing because yeah. of course I pan even though the first time we met it was kind of like it wasn't smooth eventually seeing him as an adult and paying homage he was like man I see what you're doing you're making a stunner man name look good so you know that 0-2 you know what I'm saying do your thing stunner man 2 and it was cool I ended up making a song with his producer Erickson shout out Erickson on the beat he now he produced for two generations of Stunner Man's, you know what I'm saying? So you kinda like in essential, you kinda like Stunner Man Jr. Basically, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I would I would most people would get mad at that, but most yeah. people don't pay homage to that, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know what I like about what yeah. you did? Yeah. Now this is cold, right? What I like about you did is that you was at least real about what you where you got got it from. Exactly. And what I really like about it is a lot of times, man, black people, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We name ourselves after white people we look up. Nah, phony. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And and you know, like I remember in 1994 when all the rappers was Italian mobsters and yeah, shit like yeah. that. That's why I appreciate when Rick Ross and 50 Cent named themselves after the black gangsters. Exactly. I didn't even know 50 Cent was a black gangster. 50 Cent is a black gangster. Oh, yeah. Rick Ross is a black gangster, from and Freeway is a really Rick Ross, the rapper from Florida. Yeah. That's half of Rick Ross. It's Freeway Ricky Ross, so it's got Freeway, Freeway from Philly, and, and then, then Rick, Rick Ross. Ross. So and that's then two. Yeah. The real Rick Ross, he from Detroit or L.A., right? He from L.A., if okay, I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah. He from L.A. And he was a drug kingpin. K I N G P E N. Do you know what that, that means? means. <laughs> hey, I like that for yeah, sure. So crazy, but yeah, of course, definitely got to pay homage. I think people think that's weird to, um, like, um, actually pay respect to people who are alive. I think people think it's weird to pay respect to, you know, black people. One of my partners, Gunner, all all his kids is named after uh, black revolutionaries. So I admire that, you know what I'm saying? So one of the things about me is like, why would I not be honored to 
have my name based off of somebody that I respected and looked up to for so long. Yeah. And niggas will say weird shit like, oh, that's dick riding or this, but you would rather go make your name after a white person who would probably spit in your face than to make your name after a brother who I just met last year yeah. who after meeting him and talking to him, not only did he give me a blessing, but he said, man, he one of the best artists right now in terms of paintings. He said, I will make a cover art for you if you did a project. Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, why would I not... I mean, not idolized, but why would I not pay homage and respect? Well, it's okay because, to be honest, you was really uh, ahead of your time. Because now it's niggas named hella shit where they might be, uh, let's just say, one motherfucker might be Lil Fame. One might be Baby Fame. Uh One might be... Fame Media O2. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's hella motherfuckers with similar names Or now. even a real one, uh, Lil Nas X. So Lil is the, you know, that's the rap placer for yeah. anybody. So yeah. anybody got Lil Wayne. A lot of people got Lil Nas. You, everybody know who I, Nas, Nas is. Exactly. The biggest one of all X's is probably DMX. For sure. So it's like people don't even know that word association in the hip hop or pop genre is already taking him to the next level. You know what I'm saying? For sure. But people don't even peep that. You know what I mean? But. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, all right. yeah, that's that's it is what it is. And then for me, my name is my government name is Jordan Rennie Gomes. Jordan, feel me? That's a player, country, and a river. Easy to remember, but that's to me, that's kind of like didn't a, Jesus get baptized in, in the Jordan, Jordan River? You know what I'm saying? That's the that's the that Moses. The big, I don't even think he, crossed the Jordan. Jordan exactly. You know what I'm saying? saying? Thank you for the thank you for come the highlight. Come on, man! You know come on, man! And so it's like. <laughs> <laughs> that, that whole name, when you see my name, you would probably assume that I was white, Latino, or Portuguese because yeah. Gomez, you feel me? That's uh, translatable, same as uh, Gomes. You know, that's a Portuguese name. Oh, yeah, name. yeah. Every man on my mom's side of the family, from my uncle, from me really, from me really up, has the name Rennie Gomes in their name. Okay. So it's like I already have this lineage of kind of like white people as my surname. So it's like why not have my persona where it's idolizing somebody, well, not idolizing, but respecting or yeah. coming from somebody that's black. You know what yeah. I mean? Somebody that I respect. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? You know, because the cold thing about names and shit like that is you're given names. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But what's more important? The name that you're given or that you want to be called. Exactly. And I like that name. It was cool. Like, I'm, I don't think I really stunt in terms of the conventional sense. Yeah. But I feel like I stunt with things like my personality, more my yeah. energy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, So that's cool. That make me feel good. You yeah. Know what I mean? Don't need all the jewelry. I like that too, you know what I'm saying? It will yeah. look good on you. <laughs> and I wouldn't mind throwing something in here, you know what I'm saying? But uh, it look good for sure. For sure, man. Thank you, man. So I was going to ask you, you're a rapper, right? Or yeah. a hip hop artist, of right? Of course, same thing. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, it is the difference, but okay. I'm, I'm both. I'm both. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm all of it. <laughs> hey, this fool is turned up. Yeah, man. Always, hey, bro. This shit feel it's good. 10 a.m. when we turned up, man. You niggas <laughs> asleep. Stop fucking sleeping. Nigga, wake. No, well, sleep is actually essential. You should get your rest. But still, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what some motherfuckers that's just now getting out of bed? Man, I would, it, um, I would definitely scold that unless somebody went to bed. What time is it? Um, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock? Yeah. If somebody went to bed uh, after 3, yeah. 4 a.m., I wouldn't necessarily say that was bad because that whole day you might have been up for 17 hours. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, definitely you should be up at this time taking advantage of the sun, yeah. taking advantage of what's going on. But at the same time, it's like if you've been working, yeah. Hey, so it's, it's cool. It might be cool to roll well, out. Well, you know what? I'm only talking about a motherfucker that don't got a job that's okay. looking for a job. Some yeah. people think that the time to go to look for a job is really 10 o'clock, and it's not. Nah. Because the boss been at work since 6. Exactly. They first break is at 8. Uh-huh. They had lunch at 10. Exactly. So if you get there at 10.30, they're going to tell you to call and come back an hour. Exactly. About this time, everybody's there. Exactly. I so mean, you... they on their assistant manager's ass at this point. Mm-hmm. They already upset. <laughs> <laughs> they already mad. For sure. So tell tell me about some of your projects. For sure, it's a real one. Yeah, that's definitely. I had to. I'm gonna marinate on that one real quick. I just want to take that in because you kind of just had me hit an epiphany of life. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So so I appreciate you saying that, man. Soaked up what he just said. He said early bird gets the worm essentially, and that is not by any loss. That's for a real reason. You know what I mean? For sure. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah. So you said talk about projects. You want me to talk about the first one? All right, the first one. First, first, my bad, my bad. Because you're a very interesting motherfucker. Thank you, man. I gotta ask you about the first rap name you had before Stunner Man. Oh, Jay Stunner. Okay, Jay Stunner. You said that. Yeah. So Jay Stunner. So I was in this group called Bajip. That's B A W J P. Bajip is an acronym for the people in the group whose names it was. So it's Brandon, Austin, Wayne, Jordan, Papa. 
we made that group because when I moved to Hunter's Point, we all was from the hood and lived in the hood, but we wasn't with the shit. So we was coming to the age of where, you know, playing football and chilling outside was turning into now you still play football, you're still playing basketball, but now you doing um, hood activities like you playing with guns or you seeing these niggas and you with niggas that's with the shit. And it's like, are oh, you with me and you're not going to fight with me? It's type of shit. So it was yeah. getting to that point where we either had to go with it or we had to separate. So it was this neighborhood that's, when I lived on Garlington, it was this neighborhood, right? To me and to us, it was like the, the nicest houses in the neighborhood. They was all different colors. It was like, it was like sitting on a hill, but they was, um, but it's still in the hood. But it's like, it didn't look like the, all, all the other projects. You know, you see projects, it's like all the houses look the same. And it's the, when you see these houses, they're colorful. They was just different. They stood out in the midst of being in the hood. So we went to that block and we was in that neighborhood and I was already getting called Jay Stunner. And there we created a group where we was like, man, this is going to be our group. And we didn't know it at the time, but we did it kind of like unconsciously. Uh -huh. And we were saying like, man, this is our group. This is how we're in the midst of everything. We're still different, and but yet the same as everybody. Mm -hmm. So that name was in affiliation with that group. So, you know, once we made that made that group up, it was like, okay, you got to have your name. It, I wasn't rapping then, you feel me? Yeah. I was just living. And my nickname was Jay Stunner. Yeah. And then eventually I got into, oh, my partners is like, nigga, if you're going to be with us, hey, you got to rap. I could always freestyle because poetry was my background. Okay. Love writing poetry. But it was eventually my partner, Silk Drizzle, who was Papa, he the P of the group. We was at my cousin Jesse B house, the first place I ever recorded. And he like, I'm in there chilling. I always played the back. I was uh, introverted for a lot of my life. You know what I mean? Okay. So then he like, man, hey, hey, uh, hop on this, Thunder. He's like, yeah, come on, bro. And he's like, I'm not going to let you not. And I think my first song was terrible. But as I go look back, I was like, damn, that shit was kind of fire. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how I kind of got my first name from going, moving from Field Mode to Hunter's Point and then kind of not reinventing myself. But coming of age and me as me coming of age, that's who I became. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, okay, this is who it is. That, so that became Jay Stunner. And then eventually Jay Stunner was running for a while, but my... I had had the situation with Stunner Man from the pack, and also my number was two when I first started playing football, and that was during the AIM days. So my AIM was Stunner Man 02. So eventually I just started making that. Always my handles. Like eventually, I don't think I did it on Facebook, but when I made a Twitter, it was Stunner Man 02. When I made a Snapchat, it's Stunner Man 02. Everything, I just coined it. And yeah. as I phased out of Jay Stunner and started becoming a young adult, it went into, oh, that's Stunner Man, that's Stunner Man 02. And eventually, the popularity from throwing parties with my group that we had in the city had eventually morphed into that. So it's like you can see a metamorphosis of my growth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so was that a good answer? That That's a great motherfucking answer. answer. So you know what I'm saying? I'm purposeful <laughs> with who I am. It's not a game. You know what I mean? Send this to 100 people right now. We're trying to go up. <laughs> so so I know that you give a lot of good answers. You're also an activist, right? I mean, I just, I just step up when I feel like uh, my name is called, but yeah. I would definitely, I don't, I would definitely take the label, of course. Okay, so yeah. talk about uh, some of the press conferences and shit like that you've been doing, or yo, 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 shit, uh, yo, activity during this George Floyd era. Mm -hmm. So um, we, I just posted one on my Instagram uh, channel five, just interview the group that I'm a part of in terms of my activism, which is for HD. Um, jokingly, one of the members, Gunna. He was said, man, we moving like a four headed dragon and that trans that end up going into being like if you watch this TV, it's for HD because we can we're bringing the high definition of what the problems are, what how we can make solutions. So that's what it came in for HD. But being a part of that, just um, right now, for me, it's amazing, but I just feel like it's necessary. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not nothing that I woke up one day and I'm like, man, I'm going to just go be an activist and I'm going to do this. It was something that had been in my life for longer than I can even remember, something that my mom, my grandma instilled in me. Mm -hmm. And then it was something that I had been doing my whole life. So 
when it's like a situation, you know, stay ready, so you got to get ready. Yeah. It's more of a situation where I've been around this and I've been sensitive to these issues. And it was just in this time that it was time for me to say, OK, I'm right here. I have a platform. I'm close enough to this situation. Man, let me let me speak out. It wasn't that this is my first time doing stuff like this. This is the first time I'm doing stuff like this where I actually have somewhat of a light shed on me. So okay. now people are coining that term to me. But for me, I think this is one of not only the best things for me personally, but this is one of the best things I can contribute to my community. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You need, I, I love every um, type of preference of life, every type of orientation, every color. Uh, the question I always have is, do they love me back? But that's not for me to really worry about because I'm giving you the love. But as a black heterosexual man that's living in America right now, it's a, like, it's a lot of bad stigmas on us. Okay. So we need to go. I feel like I'm not, I might not always be the best example of wh who you need to be, but we need somebody speaking for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we need people to not only speak for us, but also speak for those people who might not have the voice. Yeah. Feel me? That black woman who is getting bothered or that little kid who don't have a voice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and also, especially that black man to where Pete, you might feel like it's wrong. I feel like right, sometimes people like, uh, as a black man, people might try to make you feel like it's wrong to be a black man. Mm -hmm. You hear from white people, you hear from people in your own race and your own gender and all this other stuff. So in this modern time, it's definitely, you have to watch what you say. And you definitely have to be open-minded and you definitely have to be um, conscious of how others feel and not a way to just... I'm only doing this how they feel, but to understand how they feel, but also you have to be able to assert yourself in a way to where you're politically correct as well as socially correct in the environment. Yeah. Because one wrong thing, I'm not perfect. I've always, everybody say some bad stuff, yeah. but one wrong thing couldn't discredit you from anything that you put out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was kind of a little rambling right there, but I was feel like I was bringing it yeah, back. Yeah, definitely. I definitely mm -hmm. heard you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, I, I want to know how you feel about the word nigga. Mm -hmm. uh, nigga, I feel like it's a two-way street. For me, I feel like everything, everybody always try to make stuff black and white. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? So in a way, it's a two-way street. So I have my situation where like I understand the animosity of the word. It's coming from white people calling us nigger. All this, all this crazy shit. It, it really, it, it makes us, it's condescending to us. It puts us down. But really, if you walking through a crowd of 15 people and you like, damn, this is a, this a whole bunch of people right here. And then you like, they looking at you kind of many. And then one of them say, oh, that's my nigga right there. That then became the best word that you ever heard in your life. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I knew you was going to squeeze yeah, that. I yeah, never so, heard that with no. Yeah, somebody, I heard a, a older, a little, somebody who was a little older than me made that uh, analogy about when he was in Chicago. And he was really fearing for his life. And he ended up seeing his cousin. He was like, oh, shit. That nigga, they never felt so good. So yeah. it's like, I say that, I say that to say, of course, the word comes from um, a crazy past, a past where if you're not black, you should respect black people and saying it. I don't mind non-black people saying it, and I do get a little uncomfortable when they say it, when it's like you can feel like they just kind of, you can feel like it's not them and they saying it for approval or they saying it for that rite of passage. I get uncomfortable, but me, I'm not the type of person where I would let that affect me. Of course, you saying it in a disrespectful, condescending way, or if that's if nigga becomes the main word in every sentence you say, I'm, you you saying it more than me at this point. You making me feel like um, I'm uncomfortable as fuck. So if somebody, I feel like if some a black person asks you to stop saying that word, you shouldn't have a debate for it. You shouldn't. It shouldn't be. Oh, um, why, why, why this person get to say it and I don't? It should be. Hey, you know what? The same way. Oh, if you make a woman feel uncomfortable, she like. Hey, you got. You don't debate with this woman. You say. Okay, I'm, I I didn't know I was making you feel uncomfortable. You know, let me take a step back. Them wasn't my intentions, but I'm gonna respect you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So stuff like that. I feel like with that word. But me, if I'm with my niggas, I'm finna say what's up to my niggas. But that's just the generation that I'm in because I'm kind of desensitized to that word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A, a OG that grew up in the in the '60s that was getting beat on and all the crazy stuff, and then went through all. He was the um he set the precedent for how we should really move in society. 
society today, he's going to have a different word, a different feeling about nigga because he remember probably getting chased by a dog, being called a nigger, or getting hoes on him. The things I remember is being at family parties and it's like, oh, this is my nigga right here. Or being at, I have good associations with, uh, good memories associated with that word. Yeah. So I do understand the magnitude of what it is, but at the same time, with people I, I understand why it's an inter- a term of endearment. I don't think you should do away with the word completely, but I still think people should be conscious of how the word is used. You know what I mean? Yeah. Should I'm it be saying. on the application for a job? <laughs> if it's a white person? <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. That, hey, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm saying, I, that was, I never heard nobody say that one. You kind of stumped me. I was like, hold on. <laughs> hey. hey. So, so talk about your first project real quick. A project to the top, man. It was a it was a place in life for me. You know I'm saying, okay, artwork. I'm at Club Hue, which is now Club Love, which one of the members. This is crazy how shit comes full circle. So crazy. One of the members that of Four HD, Jamal True Love, aka Tim Millie, who was in the movie Last Black Man with me, now owns the club um, Hue. Which is he calls Club Love now. That he changed the name. Okay. So the club, the photo from the album, the album cover is when I used to throw events with an event um, company that I was working with at the time, and we used to throw just cracking ass events. That's how I met Nefta Pharaoh. That's how I met Foreign Glizzy. That's how I met Larry June. Met so many people from just throwing parties and trying to make a name for myself as an artist. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, they used to tell me every time I perform, I'm like, nah, we don't. No. First is, man, go out there. And go crazy Then it's when I'm about to perform Nah we don't know If we got enough time for you So I was taking Every single thing I could From that moment I had to squeeze Everything out It's like When you get out the shower You gotta wring it out You know what I mean So I had to wring out Every little bit I could get And at, at the end of every Like closer to the end Of every party I perform And then people be loving it So that picture Is a snapshot of history And I just uh, somebody took it and I just remember seeing that picture and it, it kind of became like a movement to me and yeah. it's like I just was thinking like man no matter what I'm doing in life or no matter where I'm at feel me I'm always going to be moving to the top it might not look like it you might not see it but that's where I'm going so that's why in the picture I'm over yeah. here pointing to the ceiling yeah. and the ceiling is a light shout out Quake Beats for engineering most of that project shout out Adi Emmy. shout out Taker over on the beat shout out all the great people that was a part of that project uh, uh, if I'm forgetting you don't get upset it's not because it's intentional uh, Quake Beats also made the um, artwork for that Okay. So that was essential, you know, and um, and doing that, that picture is special to me because it's a lot of my loved ones in that picture who I really rock with. Yeah. Like one of the pictures, just to give an example, is um, my partner, my little homie, he raps now, uh, Love, uh, Love Tali. He is the closest person to the stage taking a picture of me. And to me, that's uh, that's symbolic because... Usually, when you got close people to you, people always say, oh, the closest people to you, they're not going to show you love before this person that don't know you. But if anybody, he knows my music more than anybody. Mm -hmm. He's always posting my stuff before anybody else. He has, send me a song because he's an artist too. And him seeing me is motivated to him because it's like an iron sharp and iron situation. Even though he might be younger than me, he look at me and be like, man, if he could do it, man, I could do it. And I could do it better. You know what I'm saying? Not in a negative way. It's just a way that makes him better. So that's just a symbolism. And that's a whole bunch of loved ones that's right there. But that's where I feel like I was... I, like to me, be on stage is destined. I love it. So that project was just a place in life. And in the way that it went, it was just, I, I was strategic about it. First three songs is meant to punch you in the mouth. Second three songs is meant to, meant to soft, soften you up. Last things, three songs is meant to open your mind. It's like three phases, but it's also going into, it's giving you a precursor of how I make music. The first three songs is for you to know Stunnerman 02. The next three songs is for you to know Suave De La Stunna. The last three songs is for you to know Jordan Gomes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then you have the interludes of the people talking. The first kid from Texas, get, or the first um, one is my partner from New Orleans because that feeling of how I felt in New Orleans created the animosity for what is Stunna Man 02 now. 
Then you got Key talking to me, uh, that beautiful young lady who's thriving. She on top of her stuff, ambitious. Go look up S.P. Rogers. She's a great artist. She lives in Houston right now, but from Hunters Point, San Francisco, Bay Area. She's called somebody who's already great is calling me from Texas and saying, hey, I'm slapping your music. And somebody from Texas or in, somebody in Texas is hearing it. So, hey, keep going. And that was big to me because it, at the time, I didn't feel like nobody slapping my stuff. So for somebody to call me and be like, hey, keep it rolling, then I got to keep it going. Then the last one, Uncle Damien, uh, a great pillar in the community, a, a uncle to me and an uncle in the community talking and saying, man, we need something. I, of course, I, I kind of scripted my, hey, call me and tell me and say this, but it's not far off from what he, they usually call me and tell me. Mm -hmm. So it was like, um, and him calling me and say, hey, um, man, we need something that's going to be conscious. We need some bars, you know what I'm saying? So it's just the diversity of the project. And for me, that was my first one so it was like damn i don't know what it's like putting your together your first body of work mm -hmm. and i would i worked on it stayed on it and it was like it just came natural and that's why i love it so much yeah. my first one and i feel like that's my best project i'm not gonna lie and, and what was the name of it to the top to the top to the top because okay. that's where we're going you know what I'm okay saying? and i was going to do it i was thinking about doing a series of say that's to the top and then the next one still climbing and then the next one, like, say where I feel like I was at a pinnacle of my life, and it'd be like I'm finally here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But until I feel like I'm at those stages, right now I'm rocking with the still winning. Because, yeah. nigga, we still winning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's the to the top background. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Uh, yeah. So was that your only project you got? No, I got to the top, and I got still winning. And then I kind of do this thing where I drop, like, just songs randomly. But another project I would, I would love to do is kind of like, you know, Wayne did his No Ceilings and his dedications yeah. on other beats. I was working on something called Free Bar Friday. So that stemmed from every Friday, not every Friday, but Constant Fridays, I was dropping freestyles on Instagram. So to other beats. And then I was taking those and I was um, making songs to them. Mm -hmm. But I was like, damn, should I put this out? And I put one or two out. But I was like, and I kind of got off of it. But to me, that was the passion of making music. Yeah. It was hit. And when I first started really taking it serious, it got to the point where I'd be listening to the song and I couldn't even listen to a song with a good beat where somebody was gassing because instantly I'm like, damn, that just motivated me. I got to go rap. Why am yeah. I not this good? I got to go be, you know what I'm saying, on that level. But To The Top was the first project. Still winning, I dropped last December. Still winning volume two is currently in production. I got Feel More with the homie Gunna Goes Global. We finna send that, send that to get mixed. That's on the way. And then I got a project which is kind of like symbolic of the time, OnlyFans. That's kind of like, it's a play on how the women is eating off the OnlyFans. It's, it's a play on like the fact that if you listen to this, it's because you really fuck with me and I'm build, building a following. But it's also a play on pop culture to say OnlyFans is popping right now. Yeah. You And it's the project is catered to and more centered to women. It's me singing, it's me being vulnerable, yeah. it's me expressing myself, something yeah. like that. So, you know, but To The Top was the first project. Still Winning was the second, and we still winning. 200 is the brand, O2 is the brand. We having fun, we enjoying life. Was yeah. that a good answer? That was a great right, answer. Cool. Hey, could you kick a 16 for the gram? Oh, man, fuck it, what you want me to rap about? I want you to rap, I just want you to kick a clean 16. All right, known locally, globally is where I'm supposed to be. These bitch niggas hating, why? Cause it ain't no hoe in me. Ladies Love my poetry I guess that's just a flaw in me Combine it to a rhymes And now I call it Splitting floetry But shit Fucking handout I put my cell phone Game hella explosive Now she blowing up my cell phone Got an iPhone But save her under Samsung 7 Hey game hella explosive She might blow me to heaven I'm spitting shit like a reverend Going since 11 See when I start the rhyming I start shining Never glisten A hungry, humble type dude I ain't really with the flexing Call me stunning with the reason Cause I'm shining with my presence My rhymes hit a mind Therapeutic like this clinical Kirk Franklin when I'm rapping Got you stomping like it's spiritual Then again I'm killing beats I'm high key cynical, paradoxically lyrical. I'm blunt with my subliminals. Free bars, cause we need bars. I'm only spitting G bars. I was 18 going dummy, but nowhere close to a retard. A little with that rapping, man. These dudes can't make three bars. John Cena when I'm spitting, man. These dudes can't even see bars. That was cool. <laughs> that was tight as fuck. It <laughs> was you, on site. Yeah, hey, that's the type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to pay for You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's free bars, though. I'll give that away for free. You know what, what I'm saying? saying? That was tight. That Thank was you, man. How was your connection? How did you get in the motherfucking movie, uh... Last man in San Francisco. Was last that? black man in San yeah, Francisco. You can't forget the black, brother. Yeah, we can't forget right. the black. You know that's what I'm saying? That's right. It's essential though. I'm gonna dap you up real quick. You know what I'm saying? Sure. We can't forget the black. You know what I mean? Nah, but um, hey, this is the new term too. If anything, if every time something is good, 
you gotta say it's black you feel me so like i'm like oh these corn nuts is good i'll be like oh these corn nuts is black you feel me because <laughs> we want to change the connotation of what black is yeah so many times you hear black so oh that's the black death or oh that's a black cat black cats are good luck yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. people don't realize that but they got that connotation around black so bad. They even do it with food. You know that, right? Oh, that's, oh, that, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. That f food is burnt. It's, no, no. I'm say it again. Go, in, go ahead. Go in. Angel cake is the white cake. Devil cake, cake is the chocolate cake. But the, cold, but the cold part about it is this. The cold part about it is this. Like, like I'm a diabetic, so I study food and shit like that. All the dark stuff is better than you. Better for better you. Better Dark chocolate. Dark, dark greens. Dark greens, uh, dark potatoes, the yams versus the mm -hmm. white potatoes, brown rice versus the white rice. So the, the melanated foods is really better for you. Come on, man. Man, they don't even know. I don't even know if foods could be melanated. But technically they can because... Well, if, well melanin to us is um, chlorophyll to them. Oh, you a genius, bro. Say that again for everybody. Hold I said on. melanin to us is chlorophyll to them. Damn, that's crazy. You know, I didn't even know that. Shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I think I'm right. I'm pretty sure I'm right. But the dark greens and shit, the shit that make them dark greens. Yeah. That, chlorophyll and that's shit. wet and that could come from the sun right it's yes like, oh that's genius yeah so that's there you go you know what i'm saying you see why they we we reversing but eric they trying to brainwash us man they <laughs> brainwashing for what they all they put us in this subcategory we're not even black but we're gonna run with this shit because this is where we at right now yeah. and then we're gonna flip the whole bullshit on his head black is great it's exponential yeah but to get back to your subject we had deviated uh i got into that movie and being the worst, being in the worst point of my life motivated me and fueled me to go get one of the best things in my life. I say this because before I got that movie or I got into that movie, I, I had dropped out of college and I had no direction in life. I literally dropped out of college, was one of the first, a few in my neighborhood that went um, and was like, damn, I felt like a failure. And in the midst of that, I was like, damn, I was searching for myself and I was like, what do I really want to do? What is something that I was like, what is something that comes easy to me that I enjoy doing and I can make money from? And instantly it was performing, music and acting. And I was like, damn, I need to go act. So I was making these videos and me doing motivational speeches, putting them on YouTube. I deleted all of them now because I kind of got insecure about it. But I'm, I was building up my confidence to be on camera. And I, had, I didn't know my whole life. I had been doing public speaking, doing all of this stuff. So I was in the mindset to where if I get an opportunity, I'm grabbing it, no matter how small it is. Yeah. So my partner, he's a DJ, Von P. He used to go to our homie Nat house. I went to high school with Nat. Nat is a cool ass dude. He cook food, buy a plate from Nat, Chef Fatty Natty. He go crazy in the city, cook anything from vegan to bad high cholesterol. But um, I'm with Nat. So we go to Nat house and we do what we normally do. We chill, we probably making some music and I'm on Nat line because Nat was picking up a camera because he wanted to start filming. And then I'm like to Nat, I'm like, bro, let's make a skit, let's do this. And I'm just hella hungry because I wanted that um, feeling of achievement and then with that I was thinking oh it's gonna come money if I'm so good at this or if I do this everything is gonna come with it so just being that situation we having fun we chilling the homie Joe and Jim, the homies Joe and Jimmy walk in the room they like hey we're gonna use this room for a minute I'm um, just letting y'all know um, we um we writing a script we got to work on it and then in the mindset I was, that's the best thing you could ever tell me. That's like somebody saying, I have a million dollars for you here. And it dropped it in my lap. So mm -hmm. when they said script, I'm like, y'all writing a script? Hold on. What, 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 tell me everything I need to know. And they're like, well, well, can I read with y'all? Can I do it before they can even talk? I'm like, man, but whatever. And I remember the homie Jimmy telling me about this when I had saw him when he had came back from New York. He's like, man, I'm going to get into this. And I had been seeing them having to go fund me for it on social media. So unbeknownst to me in my subconscious, I was already aware of it. And it had just aligned to the point where preparation had met opportunity and I was ready for that moment. And I pushed hard. I'm like, man, let me read with y'all. Then for me reading in the room, when they constructing it, it went from they saying, hey, you should come from to the first actual reading with us. Then it went to us being in an um, office in Chinatown with all these producers and executives and people who want to audition for the part and want to read. And I was nervous as fuck. And then I was reading with them in the room. Then... I didn't hear nothing. I was hella nervous. I thought I did bad. I'm like, damn, but they didn't call me back for like a year. Or so it felt like hella long. So then they called me one day and I'm like, hey, 
we want you to audition for the movie. You gonna be available? I'm like, hell yeah. So then I audition and I auditioned like maybe like five times, went through different uh, rounds of auditioning. And then finally, eventually, we sat down and it was like, hey man, um, we want you to not only help us cast for certain stuff, it was, it was through the process, but also they was like, hey, we actually wanna, um, your, who you are is so unique. And so unique, not only to who you are, but to this to San Francisco in the Bay Area, we want to write you in the movie. So we like, I'm like, for real? And that was crazy to me. I'm like, damn, shout out to Joe and Jimmy for just uh, believing in me that much. And in doing that, it was just the biggest opportunity possible. So I say all that to say, man, the way I got into that movie was having the hunger to do something and just being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Seeing something for an opportunity, whereas... If they say if I was to come to you and we just chilling and you my partner and I'm like, man, we, I'm finna write a script. And you like, OK, you don't think anything of it. You don't think because your mindset is not like, oh, this going to be huge. It's not big to you. It's, and then the crazy thing about that movie is I feel like so many people, the people was trying to get in it, but so many people passed on that movie because all it was was, oh, this is just some niggas from San Francisco making a movie. They didn't know this was going to be one of the biggest independent films in the world. They didn't know it was going to have this impact. They didn't know, oh, Mike Epps, uh, Tashina Arnold, Danny Glover, uh, Brad Pitt, all these great people are A24 was going to be associated with. But also that shows you it doesn't matter what people think you're doing long as you know you're going to take that to that next level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was that was just crazy. That was just like an experience for me to where I was like, that changed my whole life forever. I would never go back to who I was before that experience. Not just the movie coming out, but the move, the point of me being in a situation and me being hungry and saying, no matter how small the opportunity is, I want to be a part of it because you don't know where that'll lead you. Mm -hmm. What if I would have? What if I would have got high and been like, oh, I don't really feel like reading right now, or you know what I'm saying? And I feel like you could never, no matter how big you get. And I do that sometimes now, but you cannot take the pedal off. Of course, you could relax and take a break, but you can never be like, you too big for something because you might have lent your hand. You might have missed out on the biggest opportunity possible just because your ego or because you like, I don't feel like doing it. You know what I'm saying? If you dare and you in the moment, you got to enjoy it. Same way Will Smith, Quincy Jones told Will Smith to um, audition for Fresh Prince of Bel-Air right there in a the moment and will's like can we do it later i want to wait till it's perfect and he's like oh quincy jones like yeah we could do it later but you know we're gonna call them in a week and they're gonna be they're not gonna be busy and then they're gonna call us in a week and we're not gonna be busy and next thing you know they done casted somebody else for the show and you missed your moment so you want to do it in two weeks or you want to do it right now and he went and read over the script i say like he said he read over 10 i don't know the time 10 30 minutes went and looked it over and went and auditioned and he killed it yeah. And it's just like it was then next thing you know, that was the birth of Will Smith's acting career. Mm -hmm. So it's just like I say to all that to say, man, it's no perfect timing. It, the, the perfect time is right now. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep. So, you know, that's it was a long winded answer. But that's how I got into the film. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you know what? You definitely don't leave nothing out. That, definitely. <laughs> you got to tell it all because I feel like people just be people. Nipsey Hussle said it so good. He was like, man, everybody just think I just got so much poise and I, it wasn't hard to get here. Or I, with this rap shit, I felt every emotion. I felt everything going through this, but I've just been going through it for so long to the point where I can keep my composure at what comes at what comes at him. Now I'm speaking as Nipsey Hussle. Keep, keep, he can keep his composure at what comes at him. It's not that he never was broke doing rap. It's not that he never was at a point where he was looking at the ceiling and was like, man, what the, why the fuck am I doing all this shit? I just, it's probably nothing gonna even come out of this. I'm, I'm wasting my time. Why am I talking to this person or telling this person I make music? They don't give a fuck about me. It wasn't that he didn't feel it. It was the fact that in the midst of all of that, he never stopped. And when you chasing the goal, that's why I didn't give a fuck about college, but until I graduated, that's why graduating college to me was huge because despite dropping out, despite being at points where I was at my lowest, despite failing classes, despite being just upset and angry and being tired, and especially with all the good stuff, despite whatever happened, it's that I finished and it don't matter how pretty it is. Everybody thinks success or what we think is success is a straight line, but really 
I was just talking to somebody like about this yesterday. Success is literally a roller coaster. When you get on a roller coaster, you feel anxiety and you feel scared because even though you might know this roller coaster, you don't know which way it's finna turn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah it's, it's high. It's thrilling and it's high energy. And that's what life is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. That's and, why. And it's crazy that you say that because success is a place. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's not a straight line. Mm. It's a it's it's a point, this point getting to this point. Exactly. And how you get there is just how you get there. Mm -hmm. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. The shit in the middle is just what it is. Mm -hmm. I'll even take it to another uh uh, another way uh, to uh, I don't know if this is the right term but a metaphysical way or take it to people might think it's cliche but a way to where when you're going for your success you already feel successful before you get it and that's an analogy to where when I get on a, before I get on a roller coaster I yell before why the why I still sit while still um, not moving or I yell while it's going up because I know that feeling that I'm about to get already, I need to express that. Yeah. The same way before you get to your success, you know, it's not that if my my goal is this cup, you know what I'm saying, to get to this cup, this cup will make me happy when I get it, but this cup will not sustain my happiness, you know what I'm saying? That's I might right. be like, oh, I got a fame media hat, all this lit, you know what I'm saying? But for this cup to really mean something and to hold value, I have to feel successful before I get this cup yeah. or else I'm going to go get this cup and I'm going to be like, man, this cup is lit. And I'm going to put it right here and I'll be like, man, I need another cup to make me feel successful. Now, I done got these two cups and I'm still like, damn, why well, don't feel good versus, man, I feel great. But you know what? I still want both of these cups. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, yeah, you yeah. can have one of my cups now. Yeah, you want to yeah. hold? Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. toast to greatness. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that to say mm -hmm. that, you know, same way success is a destination, it's a destination within yourself. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Because if you chase this shit, it's like everybody always said, and I'm trying to actually listen. Jim Carrey said it. T. Grizzly was saying in the song, or in a song, basically, all this shit that we think is quote unquote successful and used to validate ourselves to other people, really, we the only people that can validate us. You know what? That's funny because yeah. that's what Wizard of Oz was about. Is that? Oh, see, I didn't even trip. I need to go back and watch that. Wizard of Oz was about this. You got like four individuals all looking for something, right? Mm -hmm. But when they got to the wizard, guess what they found out? Everything that they was looking for, they had within themselves. Exactly. All they had to do was wake up and realize it because she was never in Oz. She was really and in, in her bed. dream. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. That's a mind. That's a mind. Shit twist. like that. That's genius. I need to go back and watch that. I'm going to watch. It, I'm going to watch the Wiz, though, because they might have. They from where they was from? Kansas? Yeah. They was for show races at that time. Definitely. I didn't see no black people in that movie. What the fuck? That shit is crazy. I'd yeah. rather watch Michael Jackson and Diana Ross. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. definitely the concept is definitely on point. You know what I mean? So. But this is what I wanted to ask you real quick. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Is the coronavirus a bioweapon? Oh, that's a it's crazy that you just asked me that. Cause I literally just read an article about how the coronavirus is really um stem from 5g uh radiation okay. or stem off of 5g so i think to a certain they said corona um i'm trying to get the right thing that they said they said corona virus is being produced in cells because of what 5g emits so i'm saying so i'm i might not think i don't know if it's exactly a bioweapon but i think in the grand scheme of things for the hunger to be first and for technology to go to that next level, I think it's disrupting the balance of what humans naturally have a frequency for or what our bodies naturally adapt to. And at any time, we might not have seen it or been around for it, but any time that happens in the world, a whole bunch of people die. For example, let's say, I don't even know exactly if the Black Plague was real. They say it's real. That's what history tells us. Do you know where it came from? The Black Plague? Yeah, what it... Uh, I heard it came from um, just not being sanitary. Yeah, fleas. Oh, fleas, see? Shit, shit like that. So, it's so basically it came from fleas. All the people who survived was the people who took care of themselves and had um, strong immune systems. All it did was wipe out the people whose immune systems are people that couldn't handle it. Basically saying, not saying these people are weak, but the people in terms of they, they those who weren't able to adapt died. Mm -hmm. So now what this is for society, all it is is saying we're going to a new level with technology. If you're not able to adapt, you're going to die. 
So in a hundred in a thousand years, as we continuously evolve, we're gonna be at a point to where our human selves is different from the humans a thousand years ago. Mm. Our immune systems are stronger, all this other crazy stuff. So now we adapting so much and being so locked in with technology to the point where if this 5G stuff is real, then that means in a thousand years, wherever we will be technolo technologically technological wise or whatever the word is. That means our, as humans, our frequency with that is where our body is going to be, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we might be in a thousand years. It might be something that that technology did that intertwines us with machines. Yeah. And if you're not able to adapt to that as a human, you either die or you get outdated. Yeah. So I think that what coronavirus is happening, not saying that it's not coming from a situation that has to deal with a sickness that deals with the immune system. I just think that right now, is it a bioweapon? It could be, but it's something that's where I think it's more so life is phasing towards this. And if you you don't survive it, that's just something that you won't be around for. You you dying off of that, you know what I'm saying? You're not surviving. Up. I don't know if they're doing it intentionally. It's a whole bunch of stories. This is going to be a crazy amount of things, but it's more so what you believe it is is most likely right, and then with that being the truth, how you adapt to it is how you will stay here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, for example, they're telling, basically, they're tell, if the corona is uh, the flu on steroids, and they're telling people, you need a social distance. You need to stay home. You need to be away from things and all of this stuff. People are chilling. They're not taking care of their bodies. They're not doing the right things for them. But if it's a cold, if anything, you need your immune system to be at the highest level to fight it. Mm -hmm. So if this is a bioweapon, that means I need to be around sunlight, eating right, working out, doing everything I need to to make sure that even if I get exposed to it, my body can fight it off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. That was long-winded as well. So, I hope the answer to maybe then yeah, I I feel like at this point, I'm not I'm not saying any I'm not ruling out any possibilities. So, this yeah. shit could be a bioweapon for real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They could be trying to weaponize it, do all this shit. White people did that with or Europeans did that with smallpox to the Native Americans. Yeah. So, it's like at the same time it's just like yeah, it could be, I mean. Yeah, I think basically everybody got different shit that they actually need to be doing because everybody is so unique. Exactly, different. you know what I'm saying? You know, like, God may tell you to work out every day. God mm -hmm. may tell me to eat different and shit like exactly. that. Exactly. But a, both would do well both, for us, yeah. Both would do. But you know, it's crazy. Like, it's crazy when I see people still chain smoking cigarettes. Yeah, that's crazy. I get it, though, but it's crazy for yeah. sure. But this is the thing, though. What I'm realizing in life, Whatever you make your norm, as long as you live with that and your body handles that, you will end up living for a long time. And I say this because my great grandma, she passed away probably like four years ago, but she was an alcoholic for the majority of her life. Uh -huh. She was drinking and the doctor said, hey, you're pre-diabetic. Um, you need to stop drinking. That'll help your life. So her listening to the doctor, she said, okay. So she stopped drinking. Upon her stop drinking, she got uh, Alzheimer's or dementia. She got all these wrong things with her. her she had to get her leg amputated because she ended up getting diabetes anyways. All of these things that these stresses or whatever you could say it was happened to her. And it was like to the point to where if you build a, my thinking is if you build a habit of something in life for so long, you taking that out of your life, you either have to supplement it and have your body uh, adjust to it or your body's going to die. If I smoke cigarettes for 50 years then and my body's already adapted to it then i might it might be better to smoke cigarettes because my body is already used to it, you know what i'm saying i totally hear what you're saying yeah but i do Jordan. think it's terrible to change smoke yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. but yeah. i was basically talking about young people and the, the difference between older people because my grandmother drink right now she probably you know yeah yeah just right drunk now. right now yeah you know what i'm saying Turned I, up. I just seen her on her birthday yeah fourth of july weekend Back in the day, she got two birthdays, the 6th or the 10th, because back in the day, they just said the week of. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. She's she 94 uh -huh. or 93. Exactly. She drinks every day. Mm -hmm. she, she drinks every day. Now, the reason why it's so hard when somebody's over, like, 45 to stop doing something, as opposed to young, because exercise is usually off the table. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if a motherfucker don't stop... Doing what actually makes them happy because heaven is in the motherfucking mind. That's fact. Just make motherfuckers happy. I mean, smoking, drinking, watching Family Feud, eating mm -hmm. cookies. 
it, 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 it fulfills them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's what makes a motherfucker happy. Yeah. It feels even good getting somebody to go to the store for you and telling them to keep the change. Exactly. Because the person you, know that they get to keep the change. Uh, and you're I feeling just, good. You feel like you did a good deed. Like, I ought to help them out. You know what I'm saying? And then when you stop doing that, right? Mm-hmm. Now the motherfucker ain't got no money going to the store. They getting the whole 20. Now you questioning the motherfucker what they spent the rest of the 20 on mm-hmm. and shit like that. It's just a bunch little of little things. It's just a bunch of shit. Like when you change one thing, you affect a whole bunch of stuff. You so really I do, do agree with you in a sense. That like ecosystem. Like when older people stop doing something, mm-hmm. then it affects them different because there's not that many other options on the table. Exactly. I ain't, feel that for ain't sure. Ain't no 90 year old motherfucker gonna just stop smoking and drinking and then start running the motherfucking lake. Mm-hmm. I don't see it. Hell yeah. They might, you never know. Yeah, I mean, but that's a one in that's a million. That's hard, yeah. Because you know why? Because it ain't that motherfucker that's even going to live to 90. Mm-hmm, that's true. Did you see that DMX and Snoop battle? Oh, that shit was fire. Was Who won to you? Uh, I'm always go with Snoop because he had more universal music. He's a West Coast artist. And even though my style is more similar to DMX, DMX made more music to where, like, man, if I'm sitting in my room, and like I'm, I'm slipping, I'm falling, and I can't get up. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that's where I'm gonna listen to that to the neck. Yeah. And when you go to a concert, that's why his concert was so lit because I feel like people was like, "Damn, I thought I was this. I'm only going through this by myself, and I'm a whole bunch of people going through this." Yeah. Snoop made Snoop not only stay relevant for way longer, but his just his attitude, his mood, his light for an event like that. His type of genre of music will always win because it always makes you feel good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's and so my that's my opinion. And Snoop just had hits, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He literally had a hit. I think he has a hit in every decade, you know what I'm saying? From since the nineties for every, sure. Every rap generation. Yeah, every, every rap generation, you know what I'm which saying? Which is four years. Yeah. So yeah, every every decade, but even if if you, even if you, I think you was to break every year by like down by fives. I don't know about the early nineties. I'll have to go check. But every five years, I think he has a song that's relevant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In the early nineties, he came out really like in deep cover was like ninety one. Mm-hmm. Yep. So but, but but uh the chronic was his debut. Mm-hmm. That was ninety two, ninety three and then 94, 95 was Doggy Style. Exactly. So, so he dominated the early 90s. Exactly. Like and he, it, was, he was the next biggest thing out of L.A. since Ice Cube. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So he dominated and then kept it going. Yeah. And then now, all he has to do is remain, stay relevant, and be himself. And jump on new shit. Smile, bitch. Smile. I'm living yeah. my, hey, man, that's it. Stuff that's going to go crazy. That was one of the biggest songs. Yeah. And his, he has credibility because of who he is. Plus... Is mutually beneficial for him because it's keeping him relevant. Did you know that Snoop is the most recognizable rapper in the world? That's crazy. I wouldn't. I mean, he. I mean, what I didn't know that. What this? This how you know? What line has Snoop hasn't crossed? Now, he, he been everywhere. He's on TV with Martha Stewart. Mm-hmm. Does little league football? Exactly. He calls himself Snoop lying sometimes so he fuck with the rosters exactly he got a gospel album uh-huh i didn't even know that i ain't listen to it yeah and he's a he's a known motherfucker from uh la his mm-hmm. associations is dr dre he a crip a crip i wanted mm-hmm. to say that yeah. but i don't know if he's still pending man he's always gonna be a crip you know what i'm saying <laughs> he just did a video this or last year talking about you can never run me out the hood nigga, or something like yeah. that when he was on niggas like nigga, nigga I'm, a, I'm a real og nigga. neil snoop yeah. getting into talking he'd be going on his things that should be hilarious but He's like, nigga, you can't kick me out. It's funny to see him to go back to who he was when he was younger. Yeah. Because a lot of the times, as in, him as an adult, we see that nice. I'm, I, I'm, I made over a hundred million dollars in my life. I'm chilling. I got my family, and we see like the he's at the place where he's at. So it's, it's interesting to see what he, who he was to get that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's yeah. cool. Well, you know, personality traits is like this. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Imagine you starting off as a piece of bread, right? Yeah. And then you throw some pepperoni on the motherfucker, right? Mm -hmm. And then you throw some beef on the motherfucker. Then you throw this on the motherfucker. You got some pizza, right? Yeah, yeah. Even though that you don't eat certain things or or something, but then you throw cheese on top. Cheese representing the money, right? Yeah, yeah. Guess what? That shit is still on there. What? It's still underneath. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, mother- now you got a deep dish. You know yeah, you got a deep dish. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like motherfuckers out here ain't playing. They not, bro. And so that's damn. So, you just helped me with something real quick. So if Stutter Man was gonna go to space, right? Yeah. What five albums are you gonna take? Um, I'm for of sure. Of all time. Of all time, let me sit and think. Do I have a second? Yeah. I'm gonna take. Um, I'm for sure. 
finna take Late Nights by Jeremiah. Jeremiah was one of my favorite artists growing up. He go crazy to me. I feel like he get a bad rap a lot of times. He probably a terrible person, but I love his music. Late Nights by Jeremiah, that just got me to an amazing place in my life, freshman year of college. Um, damn. Ooh, this is a hard question. Give me some time. Do I have time to think about it? Yeah, let me tell you mine then. Okay, go. I'm taking Erica Badu, Baduism. Okay, okay. Lauren Hill, um, the uh, miseducation of Lauren Hill. I'm looking at my finger like this. No. Okay, he like he like. Damn, that was the next one I'm gonna do. Okay, like, no, you go, go. All right, no, nah, all right, no. Nah, I'm. I just. I had to get. Let's go back and forth because okay. as you saying something, it's kind of stimulating. Like what music? It's sparking. It's sparking. A, okay, I'm going yeah. Baduism. Okay. I saw it, and then my first one was uh, Late Nights, and then I'm doing Lauren Hill, uh, Miseducation of Lauren Hill. I'm taking Thriller. Thriller. Oh, that, that album was fire. I would say, um, um, damn. That I don't really listen to a lot of albums, but I would say, can I take movies with me instead? We could get into that next. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna say, um, most deaf, and I'm. It's crazy that I'm forgetting the name of the album, but whatever album Miss Fat Booty was on. Okay. You know, you know that album. Uh uh-uh. uh I need a name. I know that song, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah. So that that album to me was like a time in history for me. Like 2015, I used to slap that every day. It's crazy that I don't remember. Uh, that the name of it, but that most deaf album, I'm taking that for sure. I'm taking All Eyes on Me by Tupac. All Eyes on Me. Yeah. Yeah, that, so much trouble in the world. Yeah, nigga. You gotta get it easy. Yeah, pay. Pay. Hey, going <laughs> crazy. Yeah, that's a great album. All right. What's another one? All right. So I said, so I got Miseducation. I got Late Nights by Jeremiah. I got Most Deaf. Hmm. I need to be, I need to be turned up. I need to play some stuff when I need it. I'm taking um, probably uh, To The Top by Stunner Man 02. Okay. I could take myself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. So To The Top, that's my fourth one. All right, what's your four? I'm taking It Was Written By Nas or Illmatic. I'm going to go Illmatic. Okay, yeah. I was slapping that in the whip, like, last time or, like, early this year. Like, January going to L.A., I think. That album is fire. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Man, he's what he said. What's that Laurent line he said? When I get this, if I get this Smith and Wesson, niggas, niggas I get to undress. Yeah. Thinking the cash flow, Buddha and shelter. Whenever frustrated, I'm a hijack Delta in the PJs. Yeah, <laughs> that was going crazy. Yeah. yeah, you know that shit back and forth. Um, yeah. uh, uh, the whole thing that I already know. Yeah, I do. Yeah, that, that came shit. out when I was in 10th grade. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, you were slapping everything. I had that shit. I had that shit on two tapes. I had mm-hmm. Casual from Hieroglyphics on one side with Nas. Yeah. And they was both in rap pages, and I was hella happy for mm-hmm. the town, nigga. And then I had uh, Illmatic with uh, 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 Outkast's first album. Exactly. Yeah. That's crazy. That's amazing. I'm happy you lived through that. I would love to have lived through that whole time period. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, I think my fifth one... Just off the top of my head, there's so many great albums, and I don't want to get boxed in by this, but off the top of my head, i probably bring Just Read Up or Just Read Up 2 by YG, because that was a moment in time for me. Like, with him being at the functions, like, YG set, like, a soundtrack for my life. Being yeah. from the Bay Area, his sound, everything, that shit was amazing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And my last one probably be Share My World by Mary J. Blige. I never even listened to that. I need to go back and listen to it. That's a classic. You yeah. ever heard this line? Who you loving? Who you want to be hugging? Dipping on your Ninja Honda with Takesha and Rhonda? That's how you know if a group of girls is a hood rat. Because when you just yell us in the... Uh, room, he said, we just... Who you loving? Uh, who, who you, you want to be hugging? Yeah. And if they turn around and say, Dipping on your Ninja Honda with Takesha yeah. and Rhonda. Woo! And if they finish that, they on some hood All shit. All right, cool. Now, I like hood women, so I'm going to make sure I walk in and yell that. Say it one more time for me. Who you loving? Who you want to be hugging? Dipping on your Ninja Honda with the Keisha and Rhonda. Well, I just kind of said that, that. Yeah. On, on, on Just Chill. Oh, I need to go mm-hmm. back and listen to that. It's surprisingly, I'm a rapper and I'm an artist, and I listen to a cool amount of music, but I don't necessarily say I rap because of music, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I more so rap because that's what I like to do. I really entertain more so based off of movies and acting. Yeah. So when I rap, I want to kind of like paint a picture for you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like that's where you know what I mean. So yeah, yes. But it's like you just put me on some stuff that I need to go revisit. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. For sure. A time in history. You know. What I'm saying?
Before we get out of here, man, give some props to some people and shit like that. Oh, man. Shout out to the world real quick, man. Shout out to yourself. Man, I want to shout out to every producer I've been working with, um, from the Quake Beats to the IDMEs to the Takeover on the Beat. To everybody, if I don't shout you out, that don't mean I don't fuck with you. Shout out to the homebodies. Play a person. His birthday just passed. Jordan uh, Marcel. Shout out to all the beautiful women that put up with me, that spend time with me, from friends to loved ones to my mom and my grandma. Just to everybody in my life shout out hey look up bay airy you know what i'm saying she one of the best singers that you don't know, you know what i'm saying you will know her soon shout out to you because you're here and we can see your face right there you know what i'm hey. saying shout out to everybody that's just functioning and living in life i want to shout out my neighborhood and I, I, i'm gonna just shout out the whole bay because even though i was i grew up in a place and i was cultivated in a place the earth is really my turf and i want to stomp where i stomp um shout out just anybody who feel like they going through something many right now. It feel like life is looking like it's not going to prevail for you. And it's looking like you should probably put your life down the drain. Shout out to you because you're in the best place you could possibly be. Because from there, the only place you could go is up. So when you feel like that, remember, nigga, we still winning. <laughs> and that means that's, that's very symbolic because even when shit looks like it's the worst possible way, you still win it because a win is what you do for, you know what I'm saying? You got to go get that shit, though. What's your Instagram handle? Stunnerman02. Thank you for reminding me. And that's just not my IG handle. That's Apple Music, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, Twitter, Snapchat. Anything is that is social or you see me out, if you put in Stunnerman02, you will find me. Not my cash app, though. If you want to send me some money, it's dollar sign. Thunderman 02. Cut the S out. So it's dot the S is a dollar sign. You know what I'm saying? Send me some money. I like that. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna do that. But anyway, <laughs> for sure. But well, this is another episode of I Need to Know with my special guest, Thunderman 02. And yeah. I am ALD's also known party boy Lawrence. And as usual, come on, you know what I want. Hey.